I'm going to hand over now to Ben Holmes from Ad Colony to introduce it. Please give him a big App Promotion Summit USA User Acquisition Zone. Welcome to the virtual stage. Ah, thank you. Thank you, James. It's not quite the same without just massive applause from the hundreds, if not thousands of people on the audience, but thank you. Uh, super excited to be here today. Uh, we are going to be talking about user acquisition in 2021. Uh, obviously, given everything that's happened lately with iOS, um, I just saw something about like 365 days into scan, but I think the reality is we're about 20 days into scan because Apple finally made the push. The cliff finally appeared and everyone's being affected. And I know that these three, we got a great panel here today. I know that they are deep in it and we're, we'll probably, the challenge now is going to be how do we talk about things that aren't scan related? Because I'm sure that's what we'll all be. But first, a quick round of introductions. Uh, so, uh, guys, how about this? How about uh, let's let's do a quick intro where you're located, uh, your role at your co company, and then how about what's something that you picked up during COVID? Could be hobby, could be anything. You know, I'll let you kind of uh, lead there. Uh, I'll, I'll start. My, my name is Ben Holmes. I'm with AdCon. I've been there here about nine years. Uh, I lead our commercial efforts for both our performance business and our exchange globally. Uh, I'm located in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, very exciting. We don't have an office here. I've been a remote employee for nine years. So when, when the world shut down and went remote, it was the same for me. So uh, what did I pick up? I didn't really pick up anything. If anything, we had a baby and I stopped working out. That's what I did. Uh, so Alexa, how about over to you? Hi, I'm Alexa, based in San Francisco. I'm on the uh, UA team at EA. And I got two dogs during the uh, pandemic. So very busy with them. Um, also got into writing my Peloton. So those are my two main hobbies now. That's great. That's great. Kenny? Hi, my name is Kenny. Um, I'm on the Bumble UA team. Um, I oversee the whole paid social side of it. Uh, one thing I picked up during the last year, I taught myself how to do, uh, do the Rubik's Cube pretty quickly. Um, and then, yeah, the Peloton as well. All right. Does that mean that if, uh, if if app growth and user acquisition falls through, you can get into competitive cubing? I would hope so, but yeah. I, I don't see that happening. Okay. Hey, never say never though, right? Yeah. 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 And last but not least, uh, Arthur. Yeah, I'm Arthur. Um, so at Duolingo, I lead up um, performance marketing. Um, what did I pick up? Um, I picked up, actually, I tried cooking some of my mom's like Korean recipes. And so I'm trying to, trying to dabble into that. Um, and I'm, I'm currently in New York. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, I did stumble across, it's actually, Arthur, see, I was a, it was a Korean grandmother who started cooking American food, which I thought was a fun little YouTube that happened. They were based in Seoul. It was a very, very entertaining. Turns out fried chicken, hit across the board. Doesn't matter who you are. 100%. Uh, very cool. Yeah. Uh, so, Kenny, uh, let's start with you. Uh, you've been at Bumble three years now, right? Uh, how would you say UA has kind of changed and evolved over your time there? Um, yeah, so U UA definitely has evolved. I think um, throughout my time at Bumble, I have seen you know budgets grow. I've seen market expansion. Um, but I think one of the biggest thing is the the core audience we target back then. There was a focus around the millennial audience, um, and then now we're just going across the board. 18 to 60 plus um, for all UA efforts. Oh, that's interesting. Have you seen, since you're no longer really focused on the on the millennial sector as much, have you seen a rise in, I guess, the boomer or the Gen Z, um, you know, with Bumble? And it's not just Bumble, right? Like there's a there's a whole series of apps within the Bumble family. Yeah. So the, the two main apps are Bumble and Badoo. They all are, are global, but uh, but the fo they're focused in different markets, especially on UA. We have different core markets that we're focused on. Um, and yeah, I would say both Gen Z and then um, the boomer audience across the board um, have come to Bumble, not just for dating, but also for uh, the BFF feature for friend finding, um, especially during the pandemic and, and everything being shut down. Definitely a way to connect with people. I did not even know there was a BFF. I need to check that out. That's the hardest thing to do as an adult is make friends. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's harder than dating. I'm married, but that's to me that's harder than dating. I'd say, uh, very cool. Um, Arthur, uh, you're in the language learning space, obviously Duolingo. I know I've started and failed at multiple languages. Um, you know, what have you been seeing? Has has the shift to remote made UA more difficult, easier? Kind of what have you seen happen last year? 
Yeah, shifting to remote has been definitely a journey for for the whole company, and I'm sure for everyone. But um, actually, Duolingo as a whole has done a really good job. Our people team has been, have been amazing and really supporting all the employees. And and we saw massive growth actually during this time. So our teams have grown. So it's funny. We I went back into the office the other week and just seeing all these people I've known for a year and a half through digital like Zoom, and then all of a sudden seeing them in um, person. It's been um, it's been quite amazing and. And just overall, the business has grown, and and, and I think um, within the time of COVID and post COVID, there's going to be a lot of kind of just changes that we're just continuing to monitor and figure out like the right role of UA. Yeah, definitely, definitely, very cool. And Alexa, uh, EA obviously huge in the gaming space. Um, you know, actually, we got a great question already from the audience. Is I would you what would you say is kind of a big difference between. Uh, you know, like a Duolingo where it's one app, really focused on one app versus Alexa, you're at EA, obviously multiple titles. Um, what would you say is one of the key differences that you think you experience that maybe a Duolingo doesn't? Yeah, um, so basically, even the way our team is structured, we have a UA manager like per, per title or, or potentially like multiple titles that work with each of the game studios too. Because there are several different game studios that make up, that make up EA, it's an international company. Um, so I think that's a, a big part of the job, right? It's not only running the UA, but working really closely with the studio teams um, and, and being involved in understanding the product as well. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, definitely. Um, very good. So, you know, with COVID, obviously it's been a very interesting, before we kind of focus forward on 2021, looking back at 2020, uh, I'm just gonna throw this out there for anyone to answer. Like, what, what are some of the big shifts that you've seen? At least, well, obviously in the last 12 months, we saw a rise of TikTok, right? TikTok really came onto the scene and that wasn't something that we were all talking about two years ago. Um, so I'll kick it over, I don't know who wants to take it, but where would you see you've seen kind of the biggest shift so far looking back the last 12 months? I guess I can jump in here. I think that like you said, TikTok um, has seen a huge shift in, in their audience um, over 2020. Um, we've definitely put a lot of focus on there, especially making content that feels TikTok-y um, and we've seen success with that. Uh, but on top of that, um, to my point earlier, we've actually seen a good amount of growth through TikTok um, for non-Gen Z audiences. So like the 25 plus um, as well. Um, and just diversifying across platforms since more people are going um, digital, CPMs have increased. So trying to diversify and find the most efficient platforms to uh, run UA ads. Got it. Very cool. Uh, have you seen that TikTok is sucking up budget from other platforms? Is it is it you know taking away social budget that might have been gone to Facebook or Snap, uh, or have you almost created a new bucket that's just for TikTok? Um, we'll we'll place it all under paid social. Um, it's definitely taken some budget from other test channels, um, things like Reddit, Pinterest, things like that, where we're constantly testing. Um, budget has definitely shifted towards TikTok for that. Got it. Interesting. Alexa, Arthur, have y'all also been able to test out the new hot social app or is it still something that's yet to be, uh, you know, hit yet? Um, yeah, I could take a little bit. All right, Alexa, go for it. Uh, we are still in the works with that at EA. So definitely something that, that we are planning to pursue in the hopefully in the um, near future. Yeah. Got for, it. Uh, yeah. It's um, it's a new we're we're kind of dabbling here and there. So we tested in Japan. We're testing in other um, geos. Um, the big concern for us was where our TikTok present, our social media team really we wanted it to be the best it, it, it that it could be before we kind of launch out. Um, and our concern, it's really interesting, Kenny, that you say that you're seeing an older generation um, on TikTok. Our concern was that we would kind of net out with like a younger generation, and that's not kind of our goal. And so um, it'll be interesting to dig in this year for sure. Very cool. Yeah. Alexa, I, I've heard that from other kind of more gaming focused pubs, right? That TikTok is not something that's still kind of uh, hasn't been breached yet. So it makes sense that, you know, that's still IDA. I like that. That's not bad. Uh, very cool. Man, Matt, we got another question from the audience. I'll go ahead and kick it over. Uh, how, how centralized are Bumbles and Magic Labs UA efforts? I'm guessing that's a, a kind of central planning or kind of more of a global uh, for a global reach. Yeah, so there has been a transition. So um, Magic Lab is now uh, Bumble Trading, so it all fund falls under the same parent account. And then there's Bumble and Badoo. Everything's so, uh, centralized within the same UA team. So I oversee 
uh, the paid social side for both apps um, and use the learning from both um, across the, the board to see where we can capitalize. Got it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Oh, man. All, all right. I love it. Uh, let's see, Arthur, this one's for you. With global travel ramping up, does Duolingo expect an uptake in the number of, potentials you, of potential users? Yeah, overall, I mean, that's the hypothesis, right? Like, um, essentially, like, global travel's coming back. We're, we're kind of strategizing around, like, travel initiatives and travel messaging. Um, the funny thing is it's, it's really inconsistent, right? Um, we ac actually had a global campaign for um, the UK kind of going live, and we thought all borders were opening, and the announcement during, like, right before our launch, um, there was an announcement on, on border closures. And so um, things like that are just something that we got to continue to, like, monitor look out for and really kind of be ahead of the game on and really have alternate messaging and things like that where we are going into this new world of post covid but there's still uncertainties especially as a global brand got it yeah that's interesting you know because kenny also you mentioned you know we, we we synced up briefly last week and you had mentioned that uh you're kind of with the world reopening you, you uh, bumble had put on pause re-entering some global markets that's now back on the table uh could you kind of talk about that for a second yeah, with um, so Bumble's available in any market that has an Apple Store or a Google Play Store. But in regards to UA efforts, um, what the way we approach it is there has to be um, a branding side to it first before we launch with UA. Um, so with COVID, some of those markets were paused um, and went back to ideation and figuring out when they would reopen to, to relaunch again. Got it. And are you guys going to be easing into those markets or are you going to be going full blast? When they say we're reopened, then dating's back on, we're going full tilt. Yeah, I would say we're definitely re-entering um, as they open, definitely being cautious with the ever-changing uh, COVID world. But um, but yeah, definitely trying to go, especially this summer. Um, you know, During the summer, uh, we do see high seasonality and and a lot of people wanting to be out and about um, dating and meeting people. Got it. Yeah, everyone's been cooped up. Alexa, have you seen any of this shift? I I, I feel like it'd be quite different for you, right? Because uh, people are more inside. Maybe they're more apt to get into gaming versus, uh, you know, something like a bubble that's more socially based. Yeah, I definitely saw a natural lift um, during the pandemic. I would say that one interesting thing is just to see how the trend plays out as, you know, people do go back to their normal lives. Um, luckily being in the mobile space, it's, you can take it anywhere with you. Right. And so I think that's the main selling point of like acquiring these users during this time and then keeping them, uh, for the long term as things go back to like normal. Got it. So, so while the goal for a dating is how do we keep people out of the house? The goal for EA is how do we keep them in the house, staying on the game and not getting out? I like it. I like it. That's, 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 that's how, that's how it works. Um, yeah, so I think that's definitely going to be a big talking point for the next 12 months, right? Every, everything's getting out. Traffic patterns will probably go back to normal, what they what they usually were, instead of consistently high traffic across the day, uh, maybe more traffic uh, based on the weekends. Have you guys revisited when it comes to almost like a day partying or a or a uh, you know heavy up on different day strategy? Is that something that, that, that any of you have talked with your different UA partners as to try to mimic as people go out, they go back to their normal behaviors and routines, try to capture them in those moments? So on, on the Bumble side, um, I think we used to do a little bit of day partying. Weekends were traditionally like higher volume times for the app, but um, with a lot of people working remotely and being Bumble being accessible on your phone at any time, I don't think that's as, as big of a, a concern for us. Okay. All right, very cool. Yeah, similarly on the Duolingo side, I mean, we see kind of schools are a big thing. So um, essentially we see kind of a peak on Mondays and Tuesdays. And so um, day partying would, and, and week partying would be a part of the strategy. But I think during COVID, it, we just saw just ex exponential like growth across the board. And it's also, we're kind of worried about CPMs and trying to understand like what that world looks like in this new, new age. And so um, those are all things that we're looking through. So not a lot of deep party on our end. Yeah, understood. Uh, speaking of CPMs, uh, let's let's jump into it. Um, what are you seeing right now, Arthur, when it comes to iOS and with all the changes that are happening and the higher opt-out rates that have hit us since the beginning of June? 
Yeah, I mean, um, the official hard push from Apple has become a, a big thing. And so it's like a new reality. You mentioned the last 20 days. Yeah, we're, we're kind of continuing to monitor. Like on our on our free version, our ads revenue side, we had a large impact. So we're trying to figure out what that looks like with iOS 14 um, out and about. And then on on the UA side, it's um, we're really kind of Android heavy um, in the sense of UA for now. And we were precursor just during COVID um, just because um, we had a lot of issues where our kind of path to monetization, um, our free apps so great. We really want to promote like free language learning for all. And so um, the product's already great. And so it's really kind of a slow burn for monetization. And so even with that, we were having a hard time figuring out kind of LTV SAC ratios. Um, so a lot of that kind of came together and we're just kind of monitoring CPMs um, on the iOS side and really just testing out the new functionality from partners like Facebook and, and Google. Um, of course, there's been issues, but I'm really trying to troubleshoot that. Got it. Well, I mean, it, you know, well, what about the Android side of the CPM, since you're more heavy on the Android side? Have you seen those uh, take a big jump in, or, you know, down or? Yeah, I think a lot more people are investing on the Android side and it really varies country um, by country. And so um, the geo specific CPMs are, are something that we're monitoring. Um, but we have kind of taken a step back into the world of kind of generalized UA and we really want to try to get um, growth across the um, the globe. So we're really kind of looking at countries that we haven't been really kind of fully um, in for a paid UA. And so um, that's kind of like the alternate strategy in this moment um, as we see CPMs in, in major countries kind of grow um, and, and inflate. Got it. Generalized CPM. That's, that's in, or sorry, generalized UA. That's interesting. Uh, I, I heard something, I was talking to someone last week and they mentioned it's almost back to the basics, right? It, it's going back five years ago. Um, Kenny, I think I think you were kind of saying something very similar last Friday, right? Yeah, we're definitely looking uh, and trying to figure out the attribution side of things. Um, you know, working with some third-party optimization and analytic tools to try to get a better sense of uh, creative and what's driving performance. Um, you know, we still see the the same levels of users as a whole come through um, is just figuring out, you know, their last point or touch um, and then kind of optimizing towards the, the most efficient platforms. Oh, that's interesting. So, so, so volume has not changed. No, I, it, it's just taking a little bit longer for us to see the volume come through. Um, yeah. So definitely not in real time. We're not making those optimizations. Um, you know, we're we're just kind of trying to dig in and see how CPMs are are look, uh, looking. We're also looking at click through rates to try to figure out um, some performance for the ads and specific audiences. So, um, yeah, more rudimentary when it comes to like optimizing. Um, so yeah, definitely like a couple of years ago when everything started like blowing up on the digital space. A couple of years. So so we've gone back. We've gone back in time. Yes. Uh, we're back to general. UA, focus on user growth, uh, volume still there, but now it's how do we attribute it? That This sounds like the beginning of my ad tech career back in 2010. That's what this sounds like, which is fantastic. Uh, Alexa, are you are you seeing some similar stuff there? Or are you guys seeing, you know, something different being gaming? Obviously gaming, that a huge thing of that is finding the whales, right? Like how do I, how do I go out? How do I find these people if, if the opt-outs are high? Yeah, it's definitely an issue. Um, I would say I've been seeing the biggest hits on UAC and Facebook, um, especially over the last couple of weeks as adoption has been picking up. Uh, I think that everyone's been shifting more towards Android, definitely been seeing more competition on Android. Um, for me, I'm also a channel owner for programmatic. So I, my main focus is trying to scale programmatic during this time. Um, that's the channel we've seen the least amount of like impact on in terms of iOS performance so far. Um, so yeah, that's that's my my main focus, and even as a team, um, we're we're trying to leverage that more and try to reallocate some of our budget from the SANS to programmatic, where we also get more data transparency. Got it. So within the programmatic channel, have you seen a shift from iOS to Android, or are you still seeing pretty good consistent scale across both? Seeing a consistent scale across both. If anything, iOS is larger for us on programmatic than Android, where it's the reverse for the other channels. Got it. And uh, as the, have the CPMs for iOS, have they been affected greatly that you've seen? Not as much as Facebook and UAC. Got it. Interesting. Interesting. Um, 
Yeah, you know, we, we're hearing that. You know, it, it, it's the attribution. It's the volumes there. Uh, we've also talked to quite a few and heard that people are starting to think about doing uh, uh, incrementality tests, going back to full blackout, turn everything off for two weeks. Uh, curious, have, have any of you guys, you know, has that come up? Is that on the docket for you? Doing it right now. <laughs> doing it right now. Everything, so yeah. you're dark right now, seeing what's happening. Yes, actually, yeah, as of yesterday, uh, dark on Facebook for one of our titles um, to see what the uplift is. Yep, definitely things that we are actively testing and um, even just working with Facebook, you know, for, for certain items like, hey, we, we need more visibility and if we can't have it, then we'll be spending our money elsewhere. Wow, I think the Facebook stock just just nosedive with that news breaking here at the <laughs> App Promotion Summit. Uh, that's that's fantastic. So, Alexa, I'm curious: Are you planning to go channel by channel? You know, doing these kind of incrementality tests, and Facebook is just first up, or is it kind of like once we do this, then we'll get a new baseline and just go from there? Um, I think Facebook is a big one for us, um, so that's really determining our baseline right now. Um, but we'll kind of see where it heads from here. It's also a channel that um, we've seen a lot of impact in terms of uh, iOS performance. Yeah, you know, that's interesting because we just got a question from Sara uh, about opt, opt in rates on iOS 14.5. Now, it's kind of our understanding, you know, uh, Ad Connie, we're not social, right? You know, we, we're more heavy in the gaming space. Uh, we're seeing anywhere from a 75 to 80% opt out rate, which is uh, in line with what other gaming, you know, kind of gaming heavy networks and folks have seen before. Alexa, what are you seeing as far as opt out rates when it comes to Facebook? Do, are, are they giving you those kind of numbers? Um, yeah, it's it's pretty much just consistent with, with the numbers that you were saying. Um, it's around like hovering around 80%. Okay, cool, cool. Arthur and Kenny, are you seeing uh, similar? Yeah. 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 And the problem with Facebook is like there's the opt out mode on Facebook along with our app. So it's like a double barrier. And so that's been kind of hitting it a little harder, um, you realize. And yeah, for incrementality, we um, actually paused all media in certain certain areas and, and tried to understand incrementality. And for us, it really varies by geo again, where um, if high organics are in, in play, then and we don't really see the output. But like um, with smaller markets, um, we're seeing incrementality actually perform really well on, on UAC Android, actually. Got it. And, uh, you know, it, I glad, I'm glad you brought up the double opt-in for a second there. Um, are you, is Duolingo, uh, uh, doing the ATT prompt or have you guys decided to uh, not even show it to your users? No, we are, yeah. And we're continuing to test um, soft prompt walls um, and, and continuing to A-B test that. So our engineering team's really kind of on that right now to um, to see what the best flow looks like. And, uh, and I don't know if you, I don't know if you're the top of your head, but do you have any early stats about, okay, what the opt-out rate you'd be seeing through your uh, channels versus your own personal opt-out rate? So you can try to figure out, is the double opt-in happening or is it not happening at all? Yeah, um, we're getting early results and every test has kind of proven out to be um, drastically different. And so um, okay. it's early days. So um, I think we're, yeah. we're hovering around that like 40 to 60 percent. Yeah. Oh, a 40 to 60 percent opt out rate. Yeah. So that means that you're definitely getting more opt ins. You're a more trusted app. People like yeah, you. Yeah, and we actually touch the message. And, and I think the, the belief of language learning free, our, our, our brand and messaging, and I think our current users are um, very like kind of supportive of that. And so um, I think there, there's a lot of kind of goodwill in that sense for, for our app, for sure. Got it. That's very cool. Kenny, are you guys doing the ATT prompt or are you just going all scan all the time? Yeah, no, we're, we're doing the ATT prompt as well. Um, and then, yeah, in regards to, um, you know, the incrementality test, we're doing a lot of testing around that across social channels, um, specifically just blacking out certain regions um, and comparing those regions to other markets that are similar size. Okay, so the increment the blackouts happening on Facebook. Do you guys have plans to do blackout for other channels, or is it once you know Facebook, that's it? No, I think uh, for us, um, Facebook, I would say, is an even pie with like TikTok and Snapchat in regards to to our focus. So we're running it across all, um, and then yeah, just kind of um, using it paid social as a whole to run this blackout. Okay. Very good. Uh, let's see, we've got quite a few questions that have rolled in. So let me, let me go. There was one that was here earlier that I think would be, ah, since you three are seasoned veterans in your space, we have someone, what would you say is your best tips for your, for smaller indie and startup studios 
uh, your top three must do's. How about how about you each take a must do so we can give them three kind of uh, three three hints on how to be successful. Who wants to go first? I'll let uh, Alexa. How about you go first? Yeah, um, I would go with more like narrow targeting, really. <laughs> I think that's huge, especially for an app like that. I think a lot of partners try to make you go like broad or run a network, and I would just go um, as narrow and defined as possible and then as like a starting place. Interesting. So how would you define, if you were starting out, how would you define kind of where you should start out narrow without going wide? Would you? Is it based on, hey, we think this is who the user is and almost do a... Uh, just some testing around that to see if you're accurate with what who you think your user base might be? Um, yeah, I mean, whatever like basic demographic information you have, right? So I'm thinking on the programmatic side, you can use a tool like App Annie and look at cross app usage and use that as like an allow list to run with if you're trying to go on the programmatic or like ad net side. Obviously, tools like uh, Facebook and UAC, you can do your own like audience modeling and, and things like that. All right, cool. So start and arrow. Uh, Kenny, what would be your tip for a small startup trying to get their feet wet? I would say uh, don't put all your budget towards one platform. Definitely diversify that. Um, you're trying to reach a specific group of people, and they're definitely not just on one app. Okay, so diversify. So don't put your budget all in one place. Unless that place is Ad Colony, then put all of your budget plus next year's budget in a Ad Colony. Great tip, Kenny. Arthur, what would you say? Um, I think it's really establishing your KPIs, like what are your goals, um, what are, what's your market, um, and really kind of establishing that so you can optimize for, for the best outcome um, and really kind of um, have hard-hitting numbers at the end of the day. All right. So start narrow. Don't put, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And then really know your KPI. You know, it's the really know your KPI. Are you, uh, Arthur, are you guys having to revisit what a KPI is now with Scan? I mean, are you in the same boat now figuring out what the KPI even is? Yeah, I think, and I think it's continued work. Um, I think for any company, I think, I think it might be a little different for, for gaming and, and dating because there are these hard hitting um, KPIs that, you know, in that purchase, et cetera. For us, we do have in that purchase, but our subscription like flow is quite long. Our trial is 14 days. There's different things. So it's like, where in the funnel can we get more efficiencies? And then also evaluating the KPIs as a holistic like view, but also understanding certain platforms can only perform on kind of um, earlier funnel, top funnel um, KPIs like registration, et cetera. Got it. Okay. So are, so, uh, are you focusing more on those early? Is that something that's kind of coming out of this? We're kind of pulling it up front, um, especially with the UAC and Firebase. We're trying to um, understand string of events that um, really kind of understand and indicate a qualified user. And so um, I think there's a lot of kind of technical work you can kind of get into and and, and and having a great data science team, I think is, is key in that as well. Absolutely, yeah. The data scientists are really running this entire industry. I mean, we shouldn't we shouldn't hide around that fact. Uh, Alexa, I'm curious. You know, being a gaming, obviously, you know, Arthur just brought up. Uh, you know, there's more hard hitting KPIs such as a ROAS. Uh, what are you guys kind of seeing when it comes to reevaluating KPIs in this scan world? Have you guys seen consistent? Everything looks good, or are you having to go back to the drawing board? We're still working on that. Uh, essentially, kind of like. A multiplier to you know to like the revenue that we are seeing um which is about like roughly you know we're tracking like 20 percent of users let's say um it's only like 20 percent of revenue <laughs> if you just like want to use that flat comparison yeah um so yeah definitely still working on it i think in the short term looking at things like cpa is pretty big um just like kind of going off of what we actually have uh, but definitely long term yes but really relying on our team's data scientists as well um they yeah. are they're running the show for sure <laughs> Um, have you had to uh, almost uh, shorten your timeline? Obviously, in the gaming space, day seven ROAS is one of the most common goals out there, right? Uh, but with with what with Apple's done and the scan timer, every time a new conversion event fires, uh, you know, it resets the clock another twenty four hours. Uh, we've talked to multiple other gaming uh, kind of gaming uh, pubs out there, and they've dropped from day seven all the way to day zero, day one. Are you guys having to do anything similar to that? Yep, exactly. Um, especially with Facebook only allowing for like the day, uh, like conversion window as well. So we, we basically have to, which is another reason why we're, we're testing, pausing there and, and like trying to test out things like a three day window with partners that can do it. Yeah, got it. Yeah. I know we were talking with one and this was actually non gaming, but they, they had to go from 71 post install tracking events down to two. Um, and obviously, uh, their their analytics team was freaking out because how do we know if these users are any good? 
Uh, all we can just look at is kind of those bigger numbers. How many users did we grow? And then is the overall revenue changing? And, you know, Kenny, it actually mentioned what you were saying earlier, that it's pretty flat. But, you know, obviously, when you're working with the data science team, all of a sudden take away all their data, that definitely raises eyebrows. And Kenny, I want to give you a moment, too. Like, have, how has it been uh, when you're looking at those kind of timelines and those KPIs? Have you guys had to adjust as well or, or not? Yes, we've definitely had to look at the smaller window um, and then look at trends um, that align with the, the longer window. So we would previously look at seven day, 30 day, um, and then now looking at like one or two days to try to, to decipher what's going on there. Kenny, I apologize. My AirPod just died on me, so I did not catch that last bit. Oh yeah, um, I was just saying we're, we're going. We're definitely looking at smaller windows and seeing what, how the trend lines match up with what we were optimizing for before. Got it. Okay, very good. Uh, man, the time's just flying by. We got a few more questions here. I think this one's kind of interesting because we've been uh, we've been talking really heavily on the UA side and Grand. Everyone here. Oh, here on you. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Mic issues. Uh, these AirPods aren't working as magic as they're supposed to. Uh, we have a question here around branding. Uh, in the U.S. market, what is your strongest branding channel? Arthur, you mentioned branding earlier. Do you want to start with that? Um, sure. Um, I think branding is it's such a world that like it depends how established you are as a brand and, and, and how you want to get into the market. I think in the U.S. for us, um, it, the U.S. is one of our strongest markets. I think Duolingo has a presence there. So it's really about like I think the rest of the world, we're seeing YouTube as a really good channel um, and really kind of going into YouTube as a mobile app. If you want to uh, buy TrueView, um, it's, it's difficult because it's website only. And so there are these limitations, but I think overall language learning as a space, there's a lot of YouTube affinity. And so with that, that's kind of a, a big part. And then just with our larger brand and our mascot duo and things like that, there, there's a lot of kind of um, like connection between like partnerships and, and, and different things that we want to kind of really raise and, and to create a global like world-class brand. I think there are those elements that we really have to kind of go into. And so um, I'm not going to speak too much about it. I'll, <laughs> the brand team <laughs> might say something, something off, off topic, but um, essentially I think that that's a big, big key and, and, and YouTube has been a big, big part of that for us video. Okay. Interesting. YouTube. That makes sense. Uh, Kenny, I, do you touch brand at all as well for Bumble or? Um, so I, I used to not as much anymore as we've uh, scaled up the teams, but I would say from a branding side, YouTube's always been um, one of our main channels. Um, definitely run a lot of brand lists through there. Uh, but then also Facebook, like always, uh, and more recently over the last couple of years, Snapchat. Um, they have a, a lot of different placements that are suitable for brand, um, and then they don't compete with our UA ads, which is great. Okay, got it. And Alex, I don't want to leave you hanging. I don't know if you touched the brand side at all, though. Uh, no, it's another team idea, but it's funny. I'll just like follow the trend. I guess it's like something we all have in common. But YouTube is also big um, yeah. when you think about like gaming and, and like the videos that people take. Um, so definitely a big one for us as well. Okay. All right. So good to know. So best sources for brand is social and YouTube. Yes. All right. I that is that's shocking right there. No, uh, I wonder. I wonder how their stock prices are doing. I bet they're just fine. Uh, very cool. Alexei, we have a specific question for you, and this is around since you lead the programmatic channel. Um, now, this is what top channel for programmatic acquisition, but how about, uh, I think this is more about uh, partners. So within your programmatic, kind of what are you seeing is working the best for acquisition and where you would recommend others to explore? In terms of um, like DSP partnerships? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, we're live with a couple of different ones that we are testing right now. Um, I think that there's a benefit in running with managed partners. Um, I think that long term, though, if you have enough resourcing, um, like using a bidder as a service or trying to run in-house is um, really like where even just the industry as a whole is moving towards, right? Um, so you own you own everything. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. Um, but yeah, I think that if you're like a smaller scale team using a managed service is great. Um, I think that managed services, it really varies like depending on your product, right? So I can say in the gaming space, um, seen like a lot of success with Moloko and like Liftoff for some of the managed GSP partners. Um, I've used Beeswax in the past as like a bidder as a service partner. 
Um, and it really all depends on like your team's resourcing and again, like your product and the inventory that you want to run on. Got it. So, um, uh, so obviously working a lot with the manage, have you guys done any testing on the self serve? Is that something that you guys have looked into backed off or, you know, like you said, you just don't have the resources right now. So it's, it's a future initiative. It's something we're actively looking into right now. I think that it's all about like, do we want to go with a self service? route, um, bidder as a service or fully in-house. Um, and all of those things take like varying levels of resources and have like varying different like costs associated with them. Um, but it's definitely something that we are actively pursuing right now. Got it. Very cool. That makes sense. Yeah. Across the board. Um, Arthur and Kenny, have you, do you guys uh, uh, dabble in the programmatic space as well? Or are you, uh, is that another team? Oh, uh, go ahead, Kenny. <laughs> oh yeah. So, um, so yeah, that is another team within the UA team. Um, but yes, we definitely dabble in it, and and it's a like liftoff, and all those other third parties are are things we're testing constantly. Oh, really? Same with us, yeah, yeah, we dabble. Um, I think we pulled back quite a bit just because I was fourteen and and other things, and we really wanted to put focus in into some of our um, primary channels. Um, but overall, I think it's definitely about revisiting. Um, and like with our MMPs, like we implemented fraud protection, and and I think there's a world that we need more focus on. Um, to really understand exactly like what this new world looks like and in, in, with the priority being getting iOS traffic um, that's clean and that's trackable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, uh, trackable inventory. That's the hardest thing to do right now. Um, it's funny, you know, uh, Ad Colony, you know, uh, only in app and, you know, nothing else. We were talking about like, oh no, I promise you that this works. It's just, you can't track it, right? But that was a conversation we were having seven to eight minutes ago. Uh, so it's just absolutely, absolutely wild. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're coming down to the end here. So one last question from the crowd. Um, have any of you guys test out some of the new AB testing that Apple announced recently, WWDC? Not yet, not on our side. Not yet. No, I think we're, we're looking to test some of the new features like the, the placement at the front screen. Uh, that is more, you know, it's not necessarily keyword based. So things like that is stuff where we're starting to look into. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, well, sweet. Um, we're just about out of time, guys. This has been great. Really appreciate all your expertise and your insight into this. It's a very interesting. Um, you know, the big key takeaways, I'd say incrementality and blackout testing is happening. Uh, YouTube and social still very strong for brand. CPMs across the board. KPIs being revisited. And then if you're a smaller company that's just getting into the space, uh, you need to focus on the narrow audience. You got to know your KPIs and uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Man, that's like a, that's a little college crash course right there in UA. Yes. Very cool. All right. Well, that's, that's, that's just about it. So appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. And thanks, Ben. Great job hosting it. Really appreciate uh, all the panelists sharing their ideas, especially at the moment. I know everyone's busy dealing with, uh, you know, huge disruption and uh, also things opening up where you are at long last. So really appreciate you taking part today. And uh, thank you so much. Of course. Thanks so much, James. Thank you, guys.